Well, you need to talk about obesity today because we're still the number one obese nation in the world. <clears throat> and, of course, for 75 years, we've been following the doctor's theory, the government's theory, that we're overweight and obese because we don't exercise enough and we eat too much. Well, obesity, it turns out, is, in fact, a simple nutritional deficiency disease. And the symptoms of these nutritional deficiencies is the munchies, cravings, and binge eating. <clears throat> and so you take the nutrients and it just goes away. Um, also, I find it kind of interesting, in April of 2012, the April 16th issue of Food Chemistry, there's a big article where they looked at baby formulas. And this is where obesity starts. <clears throat> they point out very clearly that commercially available baby foods, ones we're very familiar with, uh, they have high respectability, Gerber, Infamil, Simlac, and five others. Um, these have less than 20% of the minerals and vitamins babies need, less than 20%. Dog food has 100%. Chicken food has 100%. Laboratory rat food has 100%. Pig food has 100%. And our babies have less than 20%. That's because the people who are in charge of human nutrition, medical doctors, dietitians, nutritionists, have no earthly idea about anything about micronutrients. They know a little bit about protein and fat and carbohydrates, and they, they spend their life trying to balance all that stuff out. And they assume <clears throat> with fatal naivety, fatal for us, fatal for the patients, right, that you get everything you need just by eating well. This is a constant problem because they believe you can get everything you need from your food. And that's what they call nutritional programs, supplemental programs, supplemental programs. Because they believe you can get almost everything you need from your food. But they have to have something else to supplement a little bit. Uh, they always warn about uh, overdosing and so forth. And I found it kind of fascinating <clears throat> and once you get a hold of the, the book Health Kitchen, it goes into the, the research that shows very clearly that obesity and being overweight is a nutritional deficiency. Rare Earth Bin Cures uh, goes into great detail in Chapters 4, 5, and 6, and in Chapter 11, uh, the particular minerals that are missing when you are overweight and obese. And then Epigenetics shows very clearly, the book, my newest one, Epigenetics, shows very clearly that being obese and being overweight is not a genetic thing. It is a simple nutritional deficiency. And so, again, the three books, Hell's Kitchen, The Death of the Genetic Theory of Disease Transmission, uh, Epigenetics, uh, Hell's Kitchen, again, uh, The Cause, Wrench, and Cure of Obesity, Rare Earths, Vin Cures, and Epigenetics, The Death of the Genetic Theory of Disease Transmission. And <clears throat> obesity goes away. Usually you get on this program, you take your 90 essential nutrients appropriate for body weight, that's 16 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 essential amino acids, 3 essential fatty acids, and... Um, you take the ASAP, ASAP, as soon as possible, as soon as possible, as an accelerator, and you'll lose about a half a pound to two pounds a day. You can lose 140 pounds in 100 days. You can lose 60 pounds in 45 days. It's easy to lose 20 pounds in 30 days. It's very easy to do with this program. And the magic here is, folks, you never gain the weight back as long as you stay on the 90 cents of nutrients uh, appropriate for body weight. Now, if you look at baby farmers <clears throat> on the market, None of them have more than 13 minerals. We know we need 60 essential minerals. Where are these babies going to get the other 47? They're certainly not going to get it from eating solid food because they're only a couple of weeks old. Where are they going to get this stuff? This is why we have autism. This is why we have obesity in these kids. This is why we have um, things like ADD, ADHD. This is why uh, we have uh, type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes in babies now uh, because they're so deficient in these nutrients. You cannot get it from your food. We've changed many things. We have not allowed the fields to flood every year and replacing the minerals that are taken out by the plants as so the plants grow. And by damming up the rivers, we've stopped renewal of the mineral supply into the soil by flooding every year. We've gone to electricity instead of wood for fuel, so we don't have the plant minerals, a.k.a. wood ashes, to go back in the garden. So if you don't supplement your children before they're conceived, all through the pregnancy they developed in from the moment they're born, you're running a fool's folly here. You're going to increase the risk of birth defects of all kinds, uh, this is where the book Epigenetics comes in. You'll say, oh, my gosh, my doctor told me all these birth defects are genetic. We are a doctor is either a fool or a criminal. And I'll just give him the benefit of the doubt and assume he's a fool. Because if he's a criminal, every doctor then should be sued and put into jail. We need a, 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 a you know, Judge Roy Bean to deal with all these doctors because they have caused us to have real problems with our kids. The experts say our children are not going to live as long as us. Our children today are the first generation that will not live as long as their parents in America. Okay, God forgive us for that one. And that's because we've given over the care of our children to doctors, and they have failed us terribly beyond our, our imagination. They have failed us. 
We need to take these kids back to the doctors. We need to supplement them with all 90 essential nutrients appropriate for the body weight. Get a hold of Hell's Kitchen, the book, The Death of the Genetic Theory of Disease Transmission, a.k.a. Epi- Epigenetics, the book, Rare Earth Vin Cures. And these three books, and, and there is several CDs you can get and DVDs. Somebody needs to go to jail is, is my newest DVD. I have several more in the works, but someone needs to go to jail. Is my newest DVD has all the slides really close up and then the clear. It's very, very well done, very well produced. Someone needs to go to jail. Uh, it's a great DVD. And then Hell's Kitchen. There's a CD that goes along with that. You buy the book Hell's Kitchen from your young Jewish associate. Ask him for a free copy of that same CD, Hell's Kitchen. And then don't forget Rare Earth Been Cures, chapters 4, 5, and 6. And then look up those minerals in chapter 11. And it will freak you out because you will realize how badly the doctors and the government missed it. Well, stick with us. We'll be back with more truth, justice, and the young Jimmy way on Dead Doctors Don't Lie for these messages. Okay, Doug, what pearls of wisdom do you have for us? Well, I thought we'd talk about the kids today as we've got a Fox News story here that's actually a uh, report that came out from the Environmental Working Group. And the headline of this Fox News story says, Report. Over-fortified cereals may pose risks for kids. They say as kids chow down on these fortified breakfast cereals, they may be getting too much of a good thing. And the new report says that millions of children are ingesting potentially unhealthy amounts of vitamin A, zinc, and niacin with fortified breakfast cereal, leading to a source of excessive intake because all three nutrients are added in amounts calculated for adults. They say the outdated nutritional labeling rules and misleading marketing by food manufacturers use high fortification levels to make their products appear more nutritious and fuel a potential risk. They say although the FDA is currently updating its nutrition facts that appear on most food packages, none of its proposed changes address the issue of overconsumption of fortified micronutrients or that the recommended uh, percent daily values for the nutrition content that appear on the labels are based on adults, according to Renee Sharp. She's from the uh, Environmental Working Group's uh, Director of Research. She said it's only a tiny, tiny percentage that carry nutrition labels that list age-specific daily values. That's misleading to parents. They say daily values for most vitamins and minerals that appear on the nutrition facts on the labels were set by the FDA. FDA in 1968 and have it updated, making them wildly out of sync. That's uh, what's recommended levels deemed safe by the Institute of Medicine and a branch of the National Academy of Sciences. What I found interesting about that, Doc, was that, you know, for years I've heard you and other people involved with us here state that, yeah, the RDAs are, are old, they're woefully old, you know, they're 40, 50, 60 years old. But the the thing that I hear is that not that those recommendations are recommending too much vitamins and minerals, that those that they're woefully low in, in what they're recommending for a daily dose. Well, you're right. They're wrong. Of course, um, you have to appreciate <clears throat> that they still believe in the seven food group pyramid, the five food group plate. Um, <clears throat> and when you look at the um, minimum daily requirements, that's exactly what they're talking about, minimum daily requirements. And so anything above that, you have to remember there's a huge uh, gap between the minimum daily requirements, the optimal daily requirements, and overdosing. <laughs> and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, when it comes to things like vitamin A, niacin, and zinc, three very, very important nutrients uh, for development of children, very, very difficult to overdose for them. Usually, and I, I see literally thousands of kids every month. I see thousands of kids every month. And they have keratosis. They've got this rough skin on the back of their arms and their thighs. They have uh, keratoconus, where they, they have an ulcer on the cornea of their eye and the inner membrane of the cornea is sticking out. And this can cause blindness. These are all vitamin A deficiencies, secondary to gluten intolerance. Gluten intolerance affects 70% of our kids out there. And vitamin A, niacin, zinc, and it's usually called celiac disease when they're deficient in zinc <laughs> as a result of uh, gluten intolerance. And they have terrible, terrible bowel problems, um, constipation, diarrhea. They, they might have even ruptured intestines. They have intestinal obstruction, and they'll usually take their appendix out. They'll take their gallbladder out. And these are little kids, and really what they need is more nutrients. But they, they, you're not what you eat, and this is what uh, doctors and these dietitians, they have a mistake. They think you are what you eat. 
they forget, you are what you absorb. If you're only absorbing 10, 15 percent, you have to take overdoses based on the minimum data requirements, even get the minimum data requirements. So uh, we have a huge problem between reality and what they're thinking. So thank you for bringing that one up. Next time, I need a, a flourish because we hit it right again. We'll be back after these messages. Okay, Doug, let's go to callers. All right, let's head to West Palm Beach, Florida. And Andrea, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Andrea, you're on the air. Yes, Dr. Wallach, good afternoon. I'm going to be quick. Oh, you're busy. Um, yes, I have. I was diagnosed back in 2010 with a GIST tumor. It's a gastric intestinal tumor. Um, I'm currently taking one pill per day for this tumor. Um, I was told that it shrunk down to a point where it's not measurable anymore, but there's a sac still sitting there, and I don't want to have surgery. So I'm still taking that pill, but I want to get off that pill because it has other side effects. Sure. Now tell me, um, uh, what, what did you call this tumor again? GIST, G-I-S-T. Okay, I'm assuming that's an acronym, okay? And um, yeah, gastrointestinal. Gastric. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so, uh, is this a malignant thing or is it a benign tumor? Uh, yes, it was. They said it was cancerous. Okay. All right. And uh, how old are you? Told me something different. So, at this point, I'm not even sure, but I took that pill anyway. Yeah. How old are you, dear? I am. 50 in August. Okay, congratulations. And how much do you weigh? I weigh 127 pounds. All right. Now, do you have any other issues like skin problems, any eczema, dermatitis, psoriasis, or rosacea? No. Okay, do you have any history of respiratory problems? Asthma, bronchitis, pneumonia? I had asthma when I was a child. Okay, do you have any children? Yes, I have two boys. Okay, did any of them have asthma or bronchitis? Uh, my oldest son did have a touch of bronchitis, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, any gastrointestinal problems you've seen yourself or your children? Just me um, and maybe one of my siblings. Okay, one of your siblings, uh, is it, have they, do they have any, like, uh, constipation or diarrhea or Crohn's disease or irritable bowel syndrome, anything like that? No. No. Anybody in your family have appendicitis? No. Okay, good. Okay, Ms. Shah, are you there? I'm here. Oh, I hear that music. We're going to have to run to one of these message moments. So I think that's correct. Is that right? Did, you did are hear? correct. Okay, so hang on, Andrea. Shah and I will be back. Uh, we will tell you what to do for that wise and what to do for your program after these messages. Okay, Doug, let's go right back to Florida and Andrea. All right, um, the, the um, uh, gastrointestinal um, uh, tumor. Okay, now it, it's possible, and you know, they said it's a malignant. Well, we'll see. Um, it wouldn't hurt to get a second opinion on the material that's already taken. They don't need to do any more biopsies or anything. But, um, Char, what do you think the underlying problem is? I, you know, I think she got a malabsorption problem. What do you think that would cause that? Well, um, I go to an intolerance, obviously. Yep. And, yeah. Okay, she weighs 127 pounds. Uh, what would you give her for maximum nutrition for her immune system? Well, I think she should be taking the uh, healthy brain and heart pack because it's got the selenium in it for preventing any more cancer. Yeah, well, you, you get uh, you get an A+, plus, and I'd get her an extra bottle of selenium, so that will allow her with a healthy brain and heart pack to have three selenium at breakfast, three at dinner. Uh, that would have her take um, uh, one tablespoon of the Osteo FX Plus at breakfast and dinner, one scoop of the Beyond Tangerine 2.0 Nutri-Crystals at breakfast and dinner, three of the EFA Plus at breakfast and dinner, and three of the EFA Plus at uh, breakfast and dinner. All that would be accomplished by the one healthy brain and heart pack and the extra bottle of selenium. Um, and I also like her to get some of the um, sea cucumber. How, how would you get the sea cucumber into her? Uh, from the Ocean's Gold. Very good, yes. The Ocean's Gold. Andrea, we want you to take three of the Ocean's Gold tablets at breakfast and three at dinner. An enormous amount of research showing very clearly that the Ocean's Gold 
um, and the um, uh, sea cucumber has wonderful ability to support your immune system when you have really serious life-threatening diseases, including cancers. And then um, when you have intestinal cancers, uh, the, the, we did a study uh, with uh, Clemson University, and which product did the best when it came to intestinal cancer? It actually had a 95% rate of positive results with intestinal cancers in human um, cell cultures, not the whole human, but human cell cultures, with, with uh, intestinal and colon cancer. What were the results in that, Char? It was the ultimate classic. Yeah, perfect. And her body weight, I'd have her take one ounce at bedtime with a glass of water, the ultimate classic, and that will um, require a quart every month. And between the dietary changes, no gluten, no fried foods, no processed meat, no oils, and um, absolutely, uh, I, I would get her, uh, again, on the uh, one healthy brain and heart pack, one extra bottle of selenium, two bottles of the Ocean's Gold per month for the sea cucumber, and then one ounce of the um, Ultimate Classic at bedtime, a glass of water that's one quart a month. And give us a call every couple of weeks, if you would, please, uh, Andrea. And we'd love to hear from you. And it wouldn't hurt to get a second opinion, uh, particularly since the tumor shrunk and so forth. Get a second opinion and have them to, to tell you whether they need to stay on that drug or not. But uh, let's see how we do with this uh, nutritional program. Thanks. Hope to be back with more Truth, Justice, and the Young Jimmy Way on Dead Doctors Don't Lie after these messages. Let's go to Pennsylvania. And Jan, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Oh, Jan, you're on here. Oh, hi, Dr. Wallach. I love your work. Hi, how can we help you? Thank you for the kind words. Okay. Uh, my 86-year-old father's feet and ankles are swollen and his feet are dark purplish red. Uh, also, he's got a permanent Foley catheter that is inserted between the legs, and some fecal matter has appeared at that insertion. He's had two resulting infections that have impaired his ability to walk, and he's had antibiotics which have thrown off his digestive system. Okay, well, stop here a second. Uh, is this uh, catheter, is this in the urinary tract or the, or the colon? Uh, urinary tract. Okay. And so there's fecal matter. Well, that means that he's got a fistula between his bladder and the colon or something. Well, they, the doctors looked at that, and they said there was not a fistula, but they didn't know why that was happening. Well, it had and to be they a... Did a yeah. They did a, uh, what do you call it, like a CT scan, uh -huh. I think, in an ultrasound, and they have no idea why that's appearing I another, there? I, I would get another opinion. If you have fecal matter appearing in the urinary tract, it means there is a fistula or, or a canal or a connection somewhere. Um, yeah, there's something very wrong with that picture. Okay? And so, okay. Um, yeah, and um, what I would do here, how much does your dad weigh? He's about 117. Okay, so he's small. All right, 117 pounds. Does he have any other issues? Does he have any memory problems? Does he have any high blood pressure, diabetes? Yes, he has uh, dementia. He has memory problems. We've never, he's never been diagnosed with diabetes, but he recently went into the nursing home. We're hoping that's temporary. He also had um, atrial fibrillation after he had been in the nursing home for a month or two. Um, I started giving him some glucogel, uh, but and and lately they said his oxygen is a little bit low. Okay, all right. Uh, Do he have any skin problems? Uh, any high blood pressure or anything like that? Well, you know they took him to the hospital. I don't think he permanently has high blood pressure, but when he had that AFib, they said that his blood pressure had gone up and he had a little bit of shortness of breath. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, let's see what else here. Buh, 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 buh. All right. Uh, can he communicate? Is he functional? Uh, he's functional, yes. He can communicate, but he's he's not real. You know, in this nursing home, I'd say he's been there since February, and uh, they gave him too much sugar. Uh, I think that worsened his dementia. I'm not sure, but... Um, oh, yeah, there are dementia that will get worse with sugar, Absolutely. 
Yeah, I think that's part of what we're dealing with now. Uh, he can talk to us, uh, but he's not real great with um, hearing and understanding. And here's the ultimate question here, Jan. Are they going to let us give him stuff there in the nursing home? Yes, amazingly, yes. I've actually um, been able to take some supplements in, and the nurses actually give it to him. The only thing they don't do, they won't stand there with him to make sure he takes it. They'll leave it there for him. So I've kind of tried, because of that, I've kind of tried to go in and just give it to him myself. But uh, I had to get um, approval from his primary care physician to let me do that. And he said, you know, he just gave me the the uh, go light on the longevity product. So uh, I haven't, I, I'm pretty new to all of this. So I ha- like all I've given him is um, some of the Mighty 90 and some of the glucogel. But there are so many different issues here. I thought I needed help. Okay, good. Very smart. Okay, Char? Yeah. Here's an 86-year-old guy. Weighed 117 pounds. He's got some dementia. got AFib. And um, let's see. Uh, let's start there. Well, AFib is basically a lack of glucogel because yep. the cartilage oh. has gone away from his vertebrae. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so... Um, Healthy um, bone and joint pack would get rid of exactly. Healthy bone and joint pack, uh, which would include the glucogel. In his body weight, I'd give him 10 of those a day, five at breakfast, five at dinner time. So um, that would be the easiest to do if you have to open up those capsules, put him a little, um, uh, some of his food or sprinkle it on, um, you know, things like a hamburger patty or put it in a, a, a milkshake. It's real milk and no sugar added. Use our protein powder. It's called Slender FX. It's a weight loss thing, but if you make it with heavy whipping cream, throw a couple of eggs in there, that'll be good for him and his dementia. And uh, the glucogel five twice a day. And also, what would you do for the dementia, Sharp? For the dementia, I'd give him uh, de-stress and Ultima Daily. Perfect, because that covers many of the of the uh, problems with dementia. The eggs are going to help with his Alzheimer's disease and a lack of cholesterol. We need more cholesterol to, to ramp up his... Uh, uh, maintenance of his myelin, the, the white matter of the brain. And then the DHS capsules have the uh, nutrients necessary to deal with uh, Korsakoff syndrome or Wernicke Korsakoff syndrome, which both, both look like Alzheimer's disease, but it's, uh, uh, Korsakoff syndrome is a simple deficiency of one vitamin. Uh, Wernicke Korsakoff is a deficiency of that same vitamin, but there's also MS intertwined with it. And then that's where the selenium capsules come in, three of those twice a day. I'd give them to three of those twice a day uh, for the Wernicke Korsakoff syndrome. And, of course, the ultimate daily tablet is three of those twice a day, one bottle a month. And that is for the vascular dementia, which is extremely common, especially when people have vascular problems in their heart and their eyes. They get um, something like glaucoma. They may have cardiovascular disease, uh, coronary artery disease. They could have even kidney failure because of artery uh, problems. And they respond very well to this. I've had people, um, you know, like eight years in hospice going downhill very rapidly with dementia. And just in, in a week's time, they'll get dressed, walk out perfectly normal on these programs. It's like crazy. But they're just really raging, deficient in all these nutrients. You give them the nutrients, they suck them up, and they show such dramatic improvement very quickly. And so I would kind of think in those terms. Uh, give us a call every couple of weeks, and I, I kudos to your doctor who lets you come in. Uh, to the uh, nursing home or the hospice and give your dad those nutrients. We need to have that doctor give us a call on the air. We'd love to uh, talk with him. Okay, Doug, let's go to callers. Let's head to Michigan. And Dave, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Hi, so, Char. Dave. Hi, Doc. It's Dave in the Thumb, Team Wallach way. How you doing? Okay, sir. How can we help you? Good, good. Hey, I got a, one of my guys on the phone, Bill in Florida. He's an over-the-road truck driver. He's had a twisted bowel surgery twice. He got blood clots. They got him on warfarin, high blood pressure meds, water pill, and he's got, I, he thinks it's cellulitis. He's got this wound on his leg. It's been seeping since last October, and they he went back home. Uh, they did a blood test, and the doctor looked at it and said, oh, it looks a lot better than it did before, and then the nurse came in and said, the doctor wants you to see the surgeon. I got him on colloidal silver, but okay, I don't know if that's enough. Hang, hang on here, Dave. we got to go into those message moments. We'll be back after these messages. Hey! 
We're back with Dead Doctors Don't Lie on the ZBS Radio Network. Dr. Joel Wallach here for you on Giving 90 for Life Crusade. And, Doug, we're going right back to uh, Michigan and Dave. Okay, his friend is 400 pounds, a big fella, uh, high blood pressure, prediabetes, cellulitis his leg, open ulcer, and uh, bowel obstructions. Uh, Char, what do you think? I think he needs a lot of nutrients. <laughs> yep. 400 pounds, oh, my gosh. Well, well, basically, I think he's got a gluten intolerance because it's very common with bowel obstructions. they got gluten intolerance. They have all these intestinal problems, which goes along with him being overweight. Yep. Uh, people say, well, how can I be overweight if I can't absorb anything? Well, you can't absorb nutrients, but you can absorb calories. So it's very common for people with gluten intolerance to be overweight, have big bellies and things like that. And so um, uh, I would. Uh, what would you do for his cellulitis? What would you put on his ulcer on his skin? I put colloidal silver on it. Yeah, you're exactly right. I would keep that ulcer, uh, Dave. I'd keep that wet with colloidal silver or Envision colloidal silver. You know, soak a cotton ball, keep it wet to say for ten, fifteen minutes, four times a day. Um, I, I'm going to give you the the um, as Shar said, he's going to need, uh, need a lot of nutrients because this goes by body weight. It's one dose of everything for 100 pounds of body weight, and so ideally, with all this stuff going on, uh, he would take. Um, uh, four of the healthy blood sugar packs, healthy blood sugar packs per day. One full dose during at breakfast, one full dose during at lunch, one full dose during at dinner time, one full dose during at bedtime. For the high blood pressure, I'd have him take 12 of the ultimate daily tablets a day. That'll be two bottles a month for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner. Um, for the, let's see, for the bowel obstruction, uh, I would definitely get him on a gluten free diet, no fried foods, no processed meats, no oils. And uh, certainly, you no know, processed meats with nitrates and nitrites. And um, you have him use a salad plate for his meal plate, so, you know, portion control, as opposed to um, a full dinner plate. Wouldn't hurt him to have one meal a day as our Slender FX um, weight management uh, uh, meal replacer. It's only 110 calories, no sugar in it whatsoever, chocolate or vanilla, make it with water. And he can throw in the ASAP if he wants. ASAP, uh, one dropper full under his tongue. I would say 30 minutes before each meal, and one dropper full under his tongue. 15 minutes before each meal, it's going to require two bottles a month to pull that off. Call us every couple of weeks. Dave, we want to know this guy's weight, his blood pressure, his blood sugar levels, and how that wound is going. Okay, uh, Doug, we got time to squish one more in here? Yeah, let's head to Ohio, and Andy, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Hello, was it Andy? Annie. Oh, Amy. Uh, Annie, Andy? but that's okay. Um, Annie. Annie. Um, Annie, okay. Sorry. How can we help I, you? I have a friend that has, they think they have, she has H. pylori. She okay. has constant burning in her stomach. I mean, she can hardly eat anything. And she's okay. on pepsin, HCL, digestive enzymes, but they're not ours, and then probiotics. Okay, and how long have they been doing this? Um, she's had it for a while. She's had all kinds of digestive issues for a long time. Okay, Char, what would you do here? Get her on a gluten-free diet immediately. And how much does your friend weigh, Annie? She weighs 117 pounds. Everybody weighs 117 pounds today. Okay. So, 117? Yes. Okay. Well, as uh, Char said, I'd get her on a drop-dead gluten-free diet. Everybody in the household has got to be gluten-free. Uh, absolutely no um, processed meats or nitrates, nitrites, no fried foods, no uh, oils. And no gluten, no wheat, barley, rye, and oats. I put her on our ultimate uh, enzymes, which does have um, the um, stomach uh, acid in it to help sterilize the stomach. I would also have her take a dropper full of our Envision colloidal silver and a couple of ounces of water three times a day. And that uh, colloidal silver, if there's any H. pylori in there, it'll kill it. Uh, Envision colloidal silver will kill bacteria, viruses, fungus, and yeast. Uh, it's very soothing. It's not. It's not going to burn or be inflammatory. It's very healing stuff. And um, the ultimate enzymes I'd have her take start out with one, uh, two to five minutes before each meal, the water, and then uh, give us a, a call every couple of weeks. Let her know how she's doing. You're welcome to call anytime. Thank you, uh, everybody. Thank you, Char. Super job as usual. Thank you so much, Doug and Billy. Superlative job as usual. God bless each and every one of you. God bless our troops. God bless our Navy SEALs. And God bless America. 